box here, and I'm going to prep this coyote form. This is the, yeah, what is it, the 422? I think that, yeah, that's the next to the largest. The two larger sizes go on this larger base. And then there's one that's a little bit smaller than this. And I guess I'll show you that when, uh, once I get the body on there. But anyway, I'm going to do this body first, check it over. Prep this one. Flanges. They're usually pretty darn good. The leg joints. Make sure they're clean on the form. All looks good. That's not going to be a problem there. So the other body's good. Something with the tail here a little bit. I don't use these tails. I typically cut those off, but cut the wire off. I'm just going to bend it out of the way here a little bit. I'm going to go to the legs. Get a head in there. There's a conventional head. Okay, I've got all my legs out of here. It looks like we've got four coyote legs here. We've got a left front, a right front, a left hind, and a right hind. So we're good to go there. We'll uh, start prepping these. These got some, the coyotes have some pretty heavy wire in them. So you might want a pair of bolt cutters for, for the coyotes. Let's get rid of that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> have to do it on this year, okay? <laughs> this card table. <laughs> There's a blooper, huh? Oh, sh Don't do that again. Now what? You're still... <laughs> I can't quit laughing on that one. Uh... Over these real quick. And most of them will have a flange, a little bit of something right there. Sometimes they sand those off, sometimes they don't. You want to get rid of that because you want it to fit into that leg slot nice. That one's good. Careful you don't break the leg when you do that. Almost like a little button that needs to come off of there. It's okay if you make it a little bit deep. You just don't want it sticking out. That's good. These are usually pretty clean. Just a little bit. That's probably not even enough to matter on that one. Okay. Like I said before, they all have a number on them. So make sure those numbers on the tags, it's easier to see it on the tag before you peel them off of there, I guess, to make sure they match the body you got. Especially when you order a whole bunch of them, they'll all come mixed together, so. Okay, we've got our legs prepped. There's a foam head. We'll get these on the body now. And they should all, we have some screws here. I 
I haven't put one of these together yet. So. On something this size, I usually put two screws in. Just try to hold that flush. This back leg, this other hind leg here, it's going to lay in there, and I'm not going to fasten that in. I leave that loose during the mounting process, and then it just lays in there, and the caulking and everything, and the skin dry and everything will hold it in place. So that one we don't have to fasten on. I guess I'll say a little bit more about that. The reason I, I don't fasten this one on, if you screw that in place, it's going to make it very difficult to mount to get the skin all around there, get everything worked up into place and all. So I'm gonna leave it off of there and I can slide it into the skin no matter which way you have the thing skinned. You'll be able to get it in there easier that way. You can flop it around for sewing, you know, doing your sewing and stuff. And then in, during the mounting process, that's, you know, when you're ready to put it back up on the log base, then you'll just kind of fold it over and into place. And you can put a couple pins in it if you want to. I usually don't. I just kind of hold it in place while I get it up under the log and let it let it fall into a natural position on the log then. And the, like I say, the caulking and the skin dry and everything is going to make it strong and solid once it's all dry. So, so that one's good to go. Here. Yep, that's a fit. Again, I'm gonna use two screws on this on each leg on this coyote. And I don't bondo those or anything. I just screw them on there and they're good. Especially a, a mount like this where there's where it's just laying on a log. Not supporting, it's not supporting the mount or anything, so. Now, I screwed that leg on there. You can see now, we've got our, we've got our slot for the skin to go in. That's another one of the advantages of these forms. All your leg slots are already, already in there now. You can see how deep that leg slot is with the skin for the skin to tuck into. And one more. Like that. Good. I got to stand up on this. Kind of hard to get the right pressure on it. Sink that one yet until I get this one started. Not again. And again, just like the other one, we just created a we just created a deep like slot for the skin to go up underneath there now. There's a gap all the way around there for the skin to tuck into. Okay, got all the legs screwed on there now. We're gonna get this thing up on the log. We've got like all the screws are sunk. And they can be, you know, flush is okay. You just don't want them sticking out. You don't want a little bump there that's gonna make the skin lay funny so when it dries. So that's gonna lay right on there like that. And what I like to do at this point is take a screw and I'm gonna put a screw right, right there. Okay, there's already a screw head there from the I used this before, but. And that just gives that form something to rest against so it doesn't slide off of there. That's the only reason I put that in there. That's how the, that's how the body lays on the log. Um, the two smaller size coyotes, 
go on a different, go on, this is an MW4. They go on, the two smaller sides go on an MW3, and they shift down just a little bit, and the base is about that much shorter. So it's the same log here, same look and everything. It's just, I took a, a big chunk off the back of it to make it shorter, so it's more proportioned for, for the coyote. Okay, we gotta get that other back leg under there too, so. That just goes in right underneath there like that. I think it's in the right spot. Let's stick my head over there, yeah. Right there. I'm gonna put a couple more screws just to keep this thing in place because I'm gonna be playing with the heads and showing you different things here. So I'm just gonna put one right here in front of this leg. And I'm gonna put another long one back here just to give it support so it doesn't wiggle and fall off. That should keep it, yeah, now it's nice and sturdy on there, trying to be good. I'm gonna bend that wire down because it's gonna drive me nuts if it's wiggling the whole time I'm working on this thing. There we go. Should be good to go to start playing with the heads. Okay, I've got all these heads laying on the table and these are the choices I have to put on that body for you know, every year I got to make this decision and what expression or what attitude do I want to portray. And so I get a look at all these heads and think about what do I want to do? And I mean, we've got a lot of different choices. We've got two, we've got the conventional head and we've got the easy set. These are both just closed mouth heads. So there's a couple. We've got howling head and this one here has got ears on it. It's just one of the prototype I've been using, play with, you know, to get just to play with things and see what they look like on forms for different attitudes. And we've got a uh, snarling head. And yep, I think you could even put a snarling head on there and make it work. There's uh, open mouth. And this here's the panting. I think this, this is the one I ended up going with that's in the catalog this year is the panting head. And the open is just a little bit more open and it does work on here. And I'm gonna get into that in a little bit here how this one here is a little different than that one when it comes to using it on the body, so. Okay, I've got these heads laid out here. These three here are in the previous video, and there's like, there was like 800 pictures that, we, that were used to create those, showing all those different positions of the different heads. But anyway, uh, it's conventional, easy set, and the panting, which is the one I used in the mount. Also, let me show you here, these are supposed to come with an instruction sheet tucked in the back of them. And I just took this one out of uh, one of the heads I just opened here. And that shows how to do the, how to glue those lips if you've never done that before. So make sure you get one of those instruction sheets if you've never done that before and you, you uh, didn't get one. Get a hold of Mackenzie's and let me know, whatever. So that's important. Okay, these three here, I'm gonna kind of play around with just a little bit on here real quick to show you uh, what's going on. This here's a howling head. It's got a couple, you know, ears screwed onto it. I'm gonna hold these up and so you can see what a howling head would look like on this particular form. And I might not be holding it straight, but remember they don't always hold their head completely straight either. So you wanna play around with those a little bit. You can get different, different uh, attitudes with how, uh, what angle you put that on there but I think you could get away with a howling head on this. And all of these are gonna need some blending with the neck, which we're gonna get into later, so. There's a howling head. Um, we got a snarling head, even a snarling head. You could do different things with the snarling head and make that work also. You might want to move a leg or something just to change the attitude a little bit if you're going to do a snarling one. But think about, too, as you turn it around this way, you're going to get a different attitude, different look at it. So right now, all of these, uh, the base is, is set up here with it square to the wall. And the mounts that are in the catalog, those were all set up square to the wall, and they're pretty much looking straight out from the wall, kind of like that would be right there. So... The, the pictures that you see, uh, the pictures you see in the catalog were taken at an angle from over here, but it was mounted with it straight out from the wall. 
And these you can, you can still, you can rotate that head up and down. And the higher on the wall you put that, probably the more down you're gonna wanna go with it. So keep that in mind where the eye focus is gonna be. And then we've got the open mouth, which creates a little bit more of an issue um, because the chin is gonna hit that leg right there. Okay, so that's gonna be the maximum that you can drop that one down looking straight out. You come around this way and you gain a little bit over here. So keep that in mind if you're gonna hang it high on the wall, it might be looking out a little higher than what you want it to be. So but they still, they will all work. Okay, we've got my conventional head here. Going with it, we're gonna work with one of these. And just like always, I'm gonna run a screw in there. And I want that screw to go through approximately the center, as close to the center as possible. And I want perpendicular to the flat surface, the back of that. I mean by that, perpendicular to this flat surface of the back of the head. You see that right there? Okay, and that's important. And I just turn it back and forth to make sure I know I'm going through there, right? I'm, I'm real close there. But I'm gonna have to get a longer screw because I need a four inch screw for that. Put a little dimple in there for that to recess into. It comes, make sure it comes right back out your center hole there so you're not gonna have a problem after a while. Now remember these heads were designed with that neck post originally so that uh, when you put those on the, the original post it gave you the, the, the ability to swivel it this way so once you got this set up everything looks balanced you could level the eyes. So now with this new kind of post we have on there, in addition to getting this, now we can get this kind of movement also, which allows us to do all these kind of things. So that's what's gonna happen. But because we changed the, all the design of this neck and this post, it leaves a lot of gaps right there. So now we have to replace, depending on what position we put that on, somewhere around there, we have to replace that muscle that's already, that's been taken off for the development of the form. Okay, we've got the foam head up here in, in the, kind of a square to the wall position. And the coyote that's mounted in the catalog was in that position, the head was in that position right there. Pretty real close to that. Pretty much looking straight out from the wall. Although the, the picture was taken from more of an angle, so just so you have an idea of what you're looking at in the catalog there. We're gonna go with something, we're gonna change that a little bit, and we're gonna come over to about there. I'm gonna step around in the front before I put the screw in. But I wanna get this as close to the position I want right now before I run that screw in. And I think that's, that's about where I want it. Okay, so I'm gonna run the screw in there. Post now. Let's make sure it's where I want it. it. Looks like maybe that's a little high. We can now see because we still have that same, we put our screw in there perpendicular to the back of that head, we still have the ability to do this. Okay, but now we, we've set it for up and down and for this way but we can, still, we can still tip it. So we can still level our eyes once everything's you know, set up the way we want. And, it's, and, the, and the skin is on it and mounted and fresh. We can still rotate the, the head a little bit to make the eyes level. So I think that's where we're gonna go with that. And now I'm gonna get some clay and I'm gonna show you about building this neck back up, how minimal that is. Okay, this here's the clay I'm gonna use for building up the neck. This is plastic clay. 
I get it from the Van Dyke catalog. And I've warmed this up so it's softer. And get some out. Just work it a little bit with your fingers. And you can use potter's clay, critter clay, paper mache. Um, I don't know, any kind of epoxies, whatever you want to use. This is oil clay. This never hardens. But uh, I don't know. I just like to use this. I've warmed it up, like I said, so it's nice and soft. And when it cools to room temperature, it's going to firm up a lot. And then when the, the caulking that I use is hide paste, when that dries and the skin dries, it's all going to be good and hard. It's not going to matter that there's a little bit of soft clay in there. I'm just going to push that in there, into that gap. And we're just going to finish off, we're just going to create a, the rest of this neck right here. And we just want a nice smooth transition for that skin to blend from the neck to the head. And you can get as fancy as you want here. You can get a little more detailed if you want and create that little bit of a pole on the back of the neck right there. Or you can just blend it smooth. On these furry animals, it doesn't show a whole lot anyway as far as the musculature there. kind of it for this side I'm gonna swing this around so you can see the other side and it's gonna show you a little bit of how much I added on this side when you can see it from the other way okay here's um, a full stick that I started with there's how much I have left from what I used for this side of it I could probably do a little bit more right there not really, not really have to but I just, I don't know, just want it to be nice and smooth there. Okay, we'll swing this around and work on the other side now. There's what I have left. Okay, I got another stick of clay here. And <laughs> we're getting a downpour right now, so there's some extra noise. I hope you can hear me all right. Um, I got another stick plus that little bit from what I had left on that other one. You can see here what I've built up on the other side. We're just going to finish this off. And, uh, ready to mount. That's what's left of the second stick that I used so you get an idea how much clay it took to build that neck up. Okay, I've got this swung clear around to where you can see the back of the base right here now and you can see where the coyote lays, how the coyote lays on the log in reference to the wall and where it's looking at and what we just what we just created. I'll swing it around now so you can see, I'll swing it clear around to where this is square and flat to the wall. So you can see the angle that we created and what we did with it there. That's real close right there to being square with the wall. And if the cameraman is right and straight in line with everything. That's what we just created. Okay, we've got the head on there. We've got the neck clayed up and everything. And if you're like me, you probably like to mount these things, putting the head through the mouth, which means we've got to remove the head. And so I want to show you something there. 
And if you like leaving the head on and mounting it, that's fine. Leave it on there. You don't even have to do this step. What I do before I pull it off of there, I'm going to give it a twist like that just to make sure I got a flat surface where that flat surface and break it loose from the clay that we stuck on there. And to do, and what I'm doing here is I'm just looking at the gaps here and this isn't bad at all. Really? I brought, I'll, uh, you kind of just filling in. It's probably not even necessary on this one. It's so close, but you might have bigger gaps on some of the heads when you pull them off of there. And the reason I want that filled in somewhat is when you go to put that head in through the mouth like that, you want it to kind of lock into place. You want it to know that it's in the right place. So I want to, you know, just want to kind of finish filling that in there. Not totally necessary, but so now we want to, you know, I'm just going to make sure that head still fits on there. Everything's in place. Yep. Looks good. Now when you put that head through the mouth, it's going to just kind of go in there and lock into place and then you'll run your screw in. And remember, once you run that screw back in with it in the skin, you're still going to be able to adjust it to make the eyes level. So. One other thing I'll show you here is where the back of the where the wall is. Just hold the yardstick up against the back of the base and that gives you an idea of where the where the uh, back of the base is. And let me show you where we got this looking at. There we go. And that's kind of where we have it looking now. in on the bench now and more decisions we got the foam head we got the easy set and we've got an easy set snarling and I think we're gonna go with the snarling head today and set some eyes in that and put that on the body just for something totally different we'll get the tongue out of the way there and need that and the mask off and the eyes I have here I got a set of eyes here the new ones that I'm gonna put in there today and play with they're the same glass as what my original eyes are for the easy sets, but it's a different paint schedule. And uh, had Olus uh, get these painted up for me. I'm always trying new stuff. Olus Lyons, at, you know, Mackenzie's there. He's in charge of a lot of the glass eye work and very knowledgeable about glass eyes. He was in charge of it all at Van Dyke's for many years and uh, really knows this thing about about the glass eyes and and how that uh, all works. Um, also, we've got Phil Helms there and Mike Gillis. Also, they're all three very experienced taxidermists. If you guys have questions regarding anything to do with taxidermy, not just small mammal stuff, but anything, those guys are very knowledgeable. They all have shops. They all have, you know, done tons of taxidermy work. So, hey, shout out to those guys. You know, a um, lot, lot of information, a lot of knowledge there that you can draw from. So, anyway... Let's get on with this. We'll get these eyes set on here. Like I said, they're just something different we're going to try today. Okay, I'm going to, I guess I'll do these kind of the way uh, I recommend for everybody to do them, especially people that have never used them before. Putting a piece of clay in the back of the glass, filling that in. Kind of flush, close to it. 
and then I just take and uh, put a ball of clay on each of those flat surfaces there. They don't have to be perfect, but okay. Let's take the eyes on there, and remember, you want the you want the top of the pupil tilted in just a little bit. And if you kind of go by the the flat platform there that I put those or the, the foam platform, I'm setting the eye kind of parallel to that when you look at it from the side. That gives you an idea of kind of the cant that you want that way. And then a little bit of a tip in at the top, like I said. And then we'll set the mask on there and press those into place. And oh, gotta slide that one out. That's pretty good. That's not too bad. Those are kind of neat look. Um, you can see a little bit of white in the back corner. Whether that'll show or not once the skin's on there, I don't know. Okay, since we're going to use this head out there on the body, um, those eyes are smudged up from the clay. So I'm going to clean those off a little bit, get them shined up here so it looks better out there. And put the mask back on. I'll hold it back here and move right in with that. I'll hold this back further so you can get an idea what it looks like. snarling head on there. I rotated this body back over the other way because I had a head laying in there that had some eyes rotated in it. You maybe have seen this in another video. I don't know. But anyway, I thought, ah, we'll play with that a little bit and put it on there. So I rotated it all the way back the other extreme. And and I'm going to put hold this on there with the eyes rotated on it just to give you an idea of the different look and different attitude. And then as I rotate it around, what you can end up doing with it. And I don't know, you know, like I said, from my vantage point, it's hard to tell what I can do with that and it still look, still look neat, you know, so just to give you some other ideas. Okay, we've got our body rotated back over this way. We've got a snarling head. I'm going to start out with it kind of over here somewhere. And I can't really tell what I'm, you know, from out there what it looks like. I'm just going to play with it a little bit here and see what, uh, I, where I'm going to end up with it, I think, is going to be come back around this way, and I'm going to rotate it back that way a little bit. I think about right there is, I think, where I want to, well, maybe I'll rotate it over this way. Okay, that's what I'm going to go for, so now I'm going to pull it off of there. I'm going to take the mask off and, and get my screw in there now, so... And we'll see how close we end up. And I think about right there is where I was going for. No, that turned that way. We'll try that right there because I think we're still going to be able to rotate it on another, another way. Yeah. Watch your finger back there. Four inch screws coming off the other side. It's going to get played in so it won't matter. Put that mask on. I'm just going to hold it on there for now in case I need to change that. Okay, I'm going to get the rubber band back on there. Seems to be the most challenging part for me today. <laughs> so I can uh, move this thing around a little bit. Because remember, we still have the av availability of rotating that head now. It's a lot easier if you're in the front looking. Okay, so there's kind of where I want to end up. I'm going to spin it back this way now. 
I mean, there's, <laughs> I don't like to say it, I don't know what it looks like from out there, but you can go to the extremes that rotate in rotation now too. And you can go back this way, and this still makes a lot of sense to me over here. All the way up into there even. So there's, there's what you're still gonna have once the skin's on there. You're still gonna be able to get all this rotation. Like right all the way under here, that's all fine right there. I'm not gonna put any clay till I get clear up in here. So, I'm gonna start right there. I'm just gonna build that uh, blend right onto that neck muscle there. Kind of building that the atlas up right there. And blending it into the foam. And that's not too bad. That's pretty good for this side. Now this side's gonna need Quite a bit more you can actually if you come around you can see right into the gap of the back of that head there and I'm gonna fill that right full of clay so when that clay stiffens up and we take that head back off so during the mounting process if I'm putting it through the through the mouth to put it on I'll have a I'll have a post there that it'll just kind of lock right on to so so like I say I want to I want to fill that gap that old neck post or uh, socket, I want to kind of fill that right up. And it's still going to rotate around on that, so. You can see there's where the screw came out. So watch you don't run the screw into your finger when you're putting those on. Don't need anything underneath the neck. That's all fine down there, so. Remember, here's the center of the skull now, so there's where your, there's your center line of the neck. Always looks different when you go to the other side what you've done before. And the center line of the spine comes up here now, and the center line of the neck is up here. So you wanna connect the center line of the skull and the center line of the neck, and you wanna connect those two points. And that's where your, that's where your ridge is gonna be, with the muscle coming off each way from that, if you wanna get that critical with your neck muscling. On long-furred animals, most of that isn't gonna show, so. It's gonna about do it. Remember your skin's gonna bunch up and you're gonna have wrinkles. You're gonna have rolls in your skin right here anyway because you're cranking the neck around that far, so. And if you're mounting a big old Tom, he's gonna have a little bit heavier neck than a, than a little female's going to, so keep all that in mind. Just have fun with it. It's gonna, this is, not that hard. There you go. I think that looks pretty good. It looks like a nice smooth transition there. And then we've got the new neck muscles. So. pretty good again there's gonna be rolls that come up in here so I think that's all good it's never hurts to have a little bit of space for that skin to lay in okay with the clean up I just showed you there's what's left of that one stick of clay to give you an idea how much it used okay I just stepped back and looked at this for the first time after since we put the head on and right away something grabbed my attention and of all things it was this tail wire because we've got an aggressive cat and we've got it just kind of on a relaxed tail and it just i don't know remember too it's a continuance of the spine okay 
and an aggressive cat is always gonna, not always, but most time he's gonna have a quite a bit of curl in his tail. And a lot of times they'll, that tail will flip back and forth and be doing all kinds of things. Just like you see on a big uh, mountain lion or a leopard and their tail flipping around. Same thing with a little bobcat. They're just shorter, so. So it wouldn't be unreasonable to have that tail curved up and out like that, or you could have it swung all the way back over this way. But I'll move it over this way once. Okay. And then I want to show you one more thing. I got a dart across here. And this here's where we set that up. Here's where the wall would be. I think I'm hitting, yeah, I'm hitting both the back of the base there, so that's where the wall would be. Okay. I'm going to take that uh, head back off now and we'll check our clay joint there. Like I said, I'm going to swivel that. I guess I should have. There's how it's still going to swivel. And there's our what we created as a clay joint there now. And that's not too bad right there, so I don't think this one you even need to add any more clay on. I would just leave it like that for mounting purposes, or for the mounting process, I mean. Because so when it goes back on there, if you put it through the skin, or it's gonna go right back on there, so it's gonna stay right there. setting up this red fox now. I've got it laying on the limb there where I want it and right away I'm just going to put this screw in like I did before just to hold everything in place while I'm showing you the head and all. Get a little bit noisy here probably. everything snug okay got my foam head here the conventional head and I'm gonna do the get the screw into that get that where we want it come out there looks like a three inch screw might even be a little bit too much probably get by with a two and a half on this Okay, now I'm going to go with something a little different than the other two we did. I'm going to have that one looking off more to this side. Again, we can start, you know, way over there or up, whatever. And I'm going to move this one around. Get my screw there. And I'm going to come clear over here with it looking down and off to this side. Like that. Just for something different. There. I'm looking down in the middle bit. Just run the screw in. Okay, it's in there. Just barely poking out the other side of that knob up there. Next post. So that should still allow it. Yes, it's still gonna still gonna swivel like that for us. So that's where that's where we're gonna have that one. Go right into doing some clay work. Again, I'll start out with a I'll start out with a whole stick of clay so I can show you how much I used then for, for doing the neck. On this side, it's very much like the bobcat was, and I hardly have to do anything on this side and at the bottom. I might not do any at all. So it's mostly going to be on top and on that side. You got this angle over here, right? Okay. Go 
and the back the socket on the head is pretty much full filled in with the knob that post so i don't have to press any into that so that won't be an issue later either to where we have to take it off and redo it we're just going to create the back of the from the back of the skull onto the neck Some of you that's never done any sculpting, this can be your first experience with it. It's just clay, so if you don't like what you do, redo it. That's about it. I'm gonna do a little bit on this side, build that pole up a little bit. Walk around and check it from the other side. I think we about got it. say on a fluffy red fox you won't see minor imperfections so uh, just a little bit there I guess just, just a little too far covered up the ear hole so I actually had a little a little too much on over here there we go just blending it down Have it. I'll take that head off. There's how much clay I had left from that full stick. And I'll take the head off and show you what we ended up with there. Actually, before I take that off, let me let me turn this around sideways so you can see. Let me find my yardstick here. First, I'll show you. There's the wall right now. Here's the wall. And I'm going to spin that around a little bit so you can see what we did, where it's looking out right now then, like off the side. And there's, there's where the wall is with it turned at that angle. Just a totally different look from the same form. I'll take that head off. I guess while you're looking into it more, I'll take it off from here. Oh, I need to show you, yeah, that we still have the swivel here then for leveling the head. That clay is still warm, so it's not hard at all. That'll firm up when it cools down. And there's your, there's where it's going to go back on then. And you'll still be able to swivel it like that once you put it in the skin. Fox form put together on the NW1 log. This is the smallest of the four logs. And like before, I'm gonna it's just kind of laying there right now. I'm gonna put this screw in there just to hold things in place while I'm working on that head. And I recommend that you do the same thing if you're if you want to experiment with that head, which I hope you do. Just run a screw in it like that just to keep everything steady and sturdy while you're 
playing around with the head. That could have probably been. Well, it's all right. I'm just checking that leg, how far that leg was out, make sure it was in, in the right spot. So we got the body fastened on there, and we're going to do a foam head again with this one here. And I got to think about how I want to portray it now. Okay, I was just playing around with different ideas here, and I think I'm going to go with something like this. I want to try something a little different, so I'm going to have it looking back over its shoulder a little bit with a little bit of tilt in the head then. So just, and if you put some eye rotation in there, you get some really interesting looks. So I'm going to play around with this and see if I can get it on there like that. So first thing, I guess, look here, you can see how much of that knob is showing right there. So that's how much we've rotated around past center. And that's what I'm going to try to get. So now I'm going to get the screw through the head and try to get it on there where I want. And I'm going to try it with a two and a half inch screw this time. I think that'll be long enough. Here's what came out. had it which is I think was about right there I think that's pretty close and then I try to run my screw in there Ooh, must have ran into that other screw that I put in there which is fine it just slides off the side of it Still should rotate like this. Yes, we can still get our rotation this way. And I just need to go back and look at it and make sure that it's still where I want it. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to go to play in the neck now. Again, I'm going to start with a full stick so you can get an idea how much, how much I'm using here. And I'm going to look at the other side here for a sec. Looks like it needs literally nothing over there. You'll see that flat surface on the back of that head there, and that's that's where you take the clay up to. Blend it into the neck here. Those muscles. Right there. Good yeah. bulgy right there, I guess. Just a little bit right here. Look at it. Mm -hmm. Good. Here's our gray fox neck. 
Okay, there's a great box all played up. And here I wanted to show you again where the uh, where the wall's at with the way we just put that one on. And then I'm going to swing it around a couple of different ways so you can see what it looks like. Straight to me. So as you can see, it really creates a lot of different uh, angles and a lot of versatility there. That's at about 45 degrees there. Okay, I'm going to move it back just a little bit and I'll take that head off so you can kind of see it from that angle. Oh, again, remember though, we still have the rotation like this too. So if you want a little bit more of an attitude or something a little bit different than what we already did, or where I planned on that, you still have that. So, And there's the surface recreated and how the head's going to go on there when it's being mounted then. And your screw will go right back into that same hole. So. There's a great box. Okay, that's our Gray Fox on there. Um, I think that's about what I was going for there. I want to show you, remember, that we can uh, we can still swivel that head so you can fine-tune your expression after it's mounted. There's how much clay I had left after doing this neck, starting with that one stick. And I just, I hope you guys liked this, enjoyed it. I hope you, when you try these forms, that you play around with them a lot and uh, send me some pictures and show me what you come up with, some of your ideas and how you use them different ways. I, I love seeing that stuff, so thank you.